Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Greg McCloskey from ForexLive.com. Today's date is November 2nd, 2022. It's FOMC Day. Federal Reserve is expected to raise rates by 75 basis points at their 2 p.m. meeting. Afterwards, uh, Chair Powell will speak uh, in his normal press conference, and the market will be interested in what he has to say at that time. Will he give a more uh, definitive terminal rate, more uh, a definitive uh, game plan? For the uh, rates, or will he uh, continue to harp on data-dependent inflation uh, fears or inflation easing? We'll see. Let's get into the technicals. Looking at the euro versus U.S. dollar, this is an hourly chart. The market moved uh, above and below the 200-hour moving average. That's the green line in this chart over the last uh, few trading days. Uh, prior trading days, I should say, and trading here today, we did uh, see a bounce, uh, a little bit bounce higher here back into this uh, swing area. This swing area kind of goes back in time here, uh, so it's not just over uh, the, the near term here, but it runs between the 0 0.9896, let's call it, or 9898, uh, let's call it the 0 0.99 level, and the 0 0.99258 level. Uh, also near the high of that uh, range is the 200 hour moving average which we fell below yesterday here after coming up to it uh, he, right here moving above it then using it as support and then falling back to the downside um, uh, in the u.s uh, trading yesterday and stay below that level closing down through here again we saw a rotation back to the upside and we are uh, trading nearer that 200 hour moving average also near the downward sloping 100 hour moving average it comes in at 0 0.99309 so needless to say uh through the fomc uh, rate decision uh today uh getting above these moving averages would be the uh which would, would shift the bias back to the upside uh, for the euro versus us dollar so pay attention to those levels on the downside um the close uh support uh, i had here marked at uh, around this level right here which was the uh, so a swing low from one of the last week. I don't know which day it was. It also corresponds with this, um, more or less with this high through here. Here, admittedly, the price moved above and below that level through through here. But uh, sometimes the market always remembers the last low before uh, a move, uh, a move, a directional move. In this case, it was uh, to the upside. And that's what uh, seemed to have happened yesterday when the price came down to this level, found support buyers against it and so all the price moved to the upside so what does that mean for today well it means that if we move below that level uh that would be a downward sloping or a, uh, a break to the downside that would have traders targeting the 50 percent retracement in this swing area through here uh down to the 0 0.98056 uh if we break below this area then we open up the door for further downside momentum for the euro versus us dollar so uh in if we're going to put arrows on this uh, uh currency pair and uh, lines, I guess, getting below this uh, low right here uh, would open the doors for the downside. On the top side, getting above the 100, 200 hour moving average would be more bullish uh, for the uh, pair. In between uh, is where the uh, traders uh, decide whether they want to lean against the top side, lean against the bottom side, and or wait for the break uh, breaks and uh, go with the breaks. That's the uh, trading decision that you have to will be making and uh, will be dependent upon what the Federal Reserve says at their 2, a, 2 p.m. interest rate decision. Uh, taking a look at the uh, dollar versus yen, we saw, again, up and down price action in trading yesterday, the first to the downside, then back to the upside. We closed above the 200-hour moving average, gave, tilted the bias back to the upside, but then we saw in the Asian session, sharp move to the downside. Kuroda, with, Kuroda and Bank of Japan officials were uh, squawking and... Talking about the uh, weak yen, um, that may have been an influence uh, to the downside. We uh, broke back below the 100-hour moving average like we did yesterday, So, uh, and that in failed on the first attempt. But we did hold uh, the 50% retracement, which is somewhat uh, encouraging for the sellers, uh, and uh, we are uh, below that 50% retracement, below the 100, below the 200-hour moving average. So all these things... All these levels, I should say, will be in play through the FOMC decision. If we move back above each of these, so above the 200-hour moving average would be the final one of them. Uh, we would look for uh, further upside momentum 
through the FOMC decision uh, with a move potentially up toward the uh, 149.55 level uh, where we had uh, swing lows. This was sort of the floor here before the final push to the upside. Then we moved below that level and note the uh, move up here found found the uh, sellers near the level on the uh, fast move back to the upside also just above, just above the 100 hour moving average before we started to use that 100 hour moving average as resistance through here so this level 149.55 would be our target on further upside um, through the 30 38.2 percent retracement on the downside stay below this level and um, you know I have here marked this uh, this area through here uh, getting to these uh, swing levels down through here you have to go back in time to uh, look at uh, the importance of those those levels uh so you know sort of a ceiling here a range through here before the market starts at base and move to the upside so uh when you have that non-trending type range you get these swing areas that uh, define bullish and bearish and uh, getting below those levels through here would be the move to the downside for the dollar versus yen let's take a look at the sterling versus us dollar next and this is this one is a little bit um, more easier because we are in between the 100 and 200 hour moving average and we've been ping-ponging uh above uh to, down to the 200 hour moving average through here and up to the 100 hour moving average through here we uh fell below the 100 hour moving average uh, two days ago and uh, and rotated to to the downside we also have this uh, swing area in between the levels so in trading here today um at least in in the start and start uh we're going to be watching our moving averages here and if we break below them it opens up opens up the door to the downside with uh, moves on the downside toward 38.2 and then the 50 percent retracement and there's a swing area through here and also the underside of the broken trend line right here which uh, trend line connects high through here and here and here and broke above it here and hasn't really returned to it so uh, sometimes coming back to the re the old trend line uh, is a uh, level that is of importance and it happens to correspond with the 50% retracement as well. So that level will be a uh, key level for traders uh, to get to and through on the downside if the sellers are to take more control. On the top side, getting above the 100 hour moving average would have traders looking toward these, uh, the, the highs, you know, the high price prices uh, between 115.96 and 116.20 and then uh, 116.445 on the top side would be. Uh, where the uh, price would be going or the targets that traders would look for on further upside momentum. Uh, the dollar versus um, Swiss franc, uh, we're, we're seeing, seeing uh, moves above and below the moving averages. In fact, the two moving averages are converged because the market is up and down, vol uh, up and down volatile uh, through you know extended period of time. When you have that and the uh, two moving averages start to converge, it says the market doesn't know which way it wants to go. So it's going to look for um, breaks and then uh, breaks through, say, swing areas. So this uh, swing area on the top side here for the dollar, dollar versus Swiss uh, has a lot of recent, uh, the last two weeks, highs that uh, stalled the, fall, stalled the rise. And it also corresponds with the 61.8% retracement right through here of this move down from this high to the low right here. So it, there's a couple reasons why that, a couple, a few, more than a couple reasons why that if we uh, move to the upside, that would be a target target area. And we would have to get above that area to increase the bullish bias. And then we'd look toward this swing area up through here, where again, we have uh, you know a number of different highs that came through here broke above it and then uh, reestablished the level here before rotating to the downside. So clearly on the top side, you know, we probably had the 50% just because it's a 50% and then 61.8 in this swing area and this swing area up here would be the targets on the top side for further bullish, a more hawkish Fed. On the downside, uh, we would uh, we would look for um, staying below the 100 and 200. Probably look toward this uh, swing area uh, where there are, again, a, you know, swing areas defined by a number of different swing lows or swing highs coming in into uh in in a specific area and uh that is definitely the definition of this area through here so getting below that level would open the door for further downside for the dollar versus swiss uh and we'll look down toward the uh, low prices that we saw in last week's trading as an ultimate uh, target for this currency pair but uh chairs looking for the shove looking for confirmation in that currency pair we'll see how it all pans out so there's four major currencies and pairs in about 10 minutes 
I hope you get, uh, gain something from it as we look into the FOMC rate decision. Uh, wish you good luck in your, your trading. Have your plan. Know your levels. And things will hopefully work in your, your, your way. My name is Greg Michalowski. Good fortune with your trading. Bye-bye now.